So in order to answer this question, are these uh, biologically driven consistencies that we see across the world, are they due to nativist or anti-nativist processes? In order to answer this question, we look at table 12.4. Uh, one researcher took this approach by l wondering uh, to what extent languages uh, across the world were likely to use a prefix or a suffix or neither or both to communicate certain inflectional information such as like a plural or uh, like a like making a word plural or changing the tense of a word um, but that is to say that the the meaning of the word is not being changed but just some uh, inflectional information about that word is being changed so table 12.4 asks how frequently do, do we see these different combinations used across the world the first, uh, the, the most common is that they prefer suffixing. English is a word like this. We prefer suffixing. We take a base word like cat and we add an S to make cats. That's a suffix. We take the word walk, we add ED to make it past tense, walked. That's a suffix. Um, so we fall in that 55%. We prefer suffixing. But some languages uh, prefer either prefixing uh, and suffixing both equally, or they prefer prefixing only, like as if they were going to put the S at the beginning of cats, so it would be like scat. Um, or they might prefer uh, to not do prefixing or suffixing at all, to just mark inflectional information in a different way, that's not by modifying the word itself, maybe adding additional an additional word into the sentence. But because suffixing is the most common, we would say, all right, is this, we would ask the question, I should say, is this due to some cognitive, uh, some native cognitive process, or is it due to um, a more general cognitive process? Is it due to something specific to language, or is it due to just some cognitive preference we have in general, regardless of the medium? So researchers uh, set out by asking things, uh, they, they invent an artificial language. Uh, we're on the top of page 46 now if you want to follow along. And in that first paragraph you see that there's, um, uh, the, the artificial word is tati. Now the researchers wanted to change uh, some inflectional information about the word tati and they asked participants which one uh, would they well, they asked the participants which one sounded more similar to Tati. Was it B Tati or Tati B? And overwhelmingly, participants said that Tati B sounded more similar to Tati than B Tati. That is to suggest that Tati B has a suffix and that because participants were saying that that sounded more similar to the original, that it's retaining the the meaning of tati better than is adding a prefix to the beginning of the word. But then once they had sort of explored the linguistics, uh, the linguistical aspect, then they went on to do what's demonstrated in figure 12.5. They used objects and they put pictures at either the beginning of a set of objects or at the end of a set of objects. And they asked the same kind of question which one's more similar to the target? Is it the uh, one with the lightning bolt at the front or the one with the lightning bolt at the end? Is it the one with the little three-quarter circle at the at the end or the one with it at the front? And um, um, and the I think actually this um this picture is illustrating it incorrectly. Um, just so you know, I think that they've mixed on the second uh, on the second figure. I think they've got the uh, the prefix plus target and the target plus suffix in the wrong uh, in the wrong places. But anyway, um, so focus on the focus on the yellow one that's on the top, and uh, they they ask the participants given this target sequence, which one of these others is more like the target and people overwhelmingly kept saying that the target plus the suffix was um was more similar the lightning bolt at the end seemed like it was more similar to the target sequence suggesting that 
uh, even though this is a this I mean this what what sense does this even make to us this is you know this is a very arbitrary question and yet people overwhelmingly said that the one made better uh, that the one was more similar than the other to the target sequence that suggests that this is probably not a nativist uh, characteristic that this rather is um, some general component of the brain that suggests we prefer to retain the original meaning of a sequence of objects or a sequence of sounds or whatever by adding something to the end it can slightly change it can modify some inflectional information but it won't change the meaning of the root of it but if we add something to the beginning then we're actually changing the meaning and you can see that this is true in english as well that we add prefixes to words all the time but that by adding a prefix it changes the meaning for instance the example of re is a prefix re changes the meaning from uh like um assess might be the root word. If you reassess, it changes the meaning from assessing to assessing a, a second time. So that changes the meaning of the word. Um, but we wouldn't put uh, a, a, a suffix at the end of a word to change the meaning. We would put it at the beginning of a word to change the meaning as a prefix. So anyway, that answers the question, uh, the second question, which was uh, wondering whether the whether the cognitive the biologically driven consistencies that we see across languages are due to nativist or anti-nativist pro nativist properties it's probably due to anti-nativist processes